Hello, this is Dr. Mark A. Foster. Welcome to another edition of the Dr. Mark Foster Show. It is now early in the morning on Tuesday, June 17th of 2014. It's been quite a while since my last broadcast, and I apologize to everyone who may have been listening. I doubt there are that many of you, but anybody who has, I apologize. I've been very busy with a lot of um, other sorts of things, including working on my glossary, which is now quite large. If any of you would like to read it, uh, I will include a link uh, to it directly uh, below this broadcast in the information uh, section of YouTube. Um, but primarily, what I wanted to talk about today was uh, something unrelated to that. Going back to a subject that I have tackled before, but something that I have also reconsidered, which I now have somewhat different ideas about than I did before. At one time, relatively recently, I thought that there was such a thing as alien abductions. Now, I did not like that term. I called them contact emancipations, which I still do sometimes. But nonetheless, I still thought that these beings who were in contact with us in various ways, including uh, through uh, personal experiences and crop formations and other uh, sorts of things that have happening around the world, that these beings basically were uh, extraterrestrial entities. Well, I am not saying that there are no extraterrestrials that are in the world. Uh, there might very well be uh, some extraterrestrials visiting us or sending probes of some sort uh, to this planet. There may even be uh, uh, extraterrestrial visitors on the planet right now. But I don't think that those are primarily the beings who have been engaging with us as a planet, and which apparently, I think, as a species, have been with us for a very, very, very long time. I would suggest perhaps for as long as we have been around. I don't think that these beings are exactly human, although they may be human on some level, I don't know, but I think they actually occupy a separate condition of existence or world of God um, which is referred to in in various uh, Baha'i texts um, as as the inner world um, in uh, the book the uh, seven valleys um, Baha'u'llah talks about various types of beings that we as human beings encounter in our dreams and he says that um, that people in this valley, in the Valley of Wonderment, can understand them, um, and that the creation of God embraces much more than us. That we may think that we are relatively unique in the universe. We're not. We may think that we are the highest level of existence in the universe. Again, we are not. And these beings, um, who I think perhaps could be described as interdimensional or extra-dimensional, um, are who I refer to as archangels. And I think archangels is the best term for them. It's a Greek term. It is used in the New Testament. Um, Baha'u'llah, the prophet founder of the Baha'i faith, refers to them as um, Malachia Alei, meaning the angels above or the angels exalted, uh, which in effect I think is a, another way of referring to the archangels. So I think that these beings can contact us in a variety of ways, whether it's um, through sleep, perhaps through visionary experiences. Uh, sometimes people have had experiences with these beings uh, when engaging in certain types of recreational drug use, including ayahuasca. I don't think that's a good idea, but I think it's interesting that many people, when they have seen these beings, 
um, during the use of ayahuasca often experience them in a type of surgical setting. In effect, uh, I think giving a message like, you shouldn't be doing this, you're going to get really, really sick. So I think that, the, that these beings are, in a sense, healing us. Um, they are the creatures that we engage with in our dreams. Um, these beings are real beings. They may take on the forms of other people that we may know in our lives, our friends, our family members, people in the media, but they are, they are extra-dimensional beings. They're not exactly human, um, and they are uh, supernatural, or perhaps a better term would be preternatural, beyond the natural. They occupy a realm uh, that is that is beyond what we think of as being ordinary. Baha'u'llah and the Bab, I think, both both referred to them. Uh, the Bab, in particular, who would commonly say, talk about the he the heavens and the earth, and whatsoever lieth between them. Uh, these archangelic beings, I think, are the ones that perhaps he was referring to. Uh, these are beings; they're not quite on earth, meaning in the physical or human world. They're not quite in the heavens, but they are in a realm in between, and that means they can go from one to the other with relative ease. So they can appear and then disappear. And uh, that is uh, kind of like many people who have seen what people describe as their spacecraft or their UFOs, how they can appear and disappear. I think it's the same kinds of thing. That's who these beings are. Uh, they are interdimensional, extra-dimensional beings who can appear to us however they choose to in accordance with the will of God. Now, to my most recent experience. This was last night, uh, just over, um, well, maybe about 16, 17 hours ago. I very rarely recall my dreams. Very, very rarely. Last night was unusual. I woke up remembering about three or four separate dreams, something I had not done since I was a child. I then went back to sleep for a relatively short time, I think, and then I woke up again and remembered at least one more dream. Again, a very unusual experience for me. Here is how I described the experience in writing in my personal Angelophanes book, and I will also include a link to this book below the broadcast. In the early morning hours of June 16th, 2014, Al Dion Al Malak which translates as the judge, the angel, appeared to me during one or more contact emancipations. I very rarely recollect my dreams. However, on this particular morning, I remembered several of them. After waking up, I went back to sleep, and then I recalled another. Most of the dreams did not impress me at the time, in one of them, however, I noticed that a very serious-looking woman, someone I did not recognize, was in my apartment without my permission. When I pointed this fact out to her, she told me that she had the authority to be there. I then phoned the main office, and only a recording answered. Uh, a man uh, said that they were in the middle of some type of crisis. I do not recall what the woman looked like, but she appeared to be roughly maybe late 30s or early 40s. However, I suspect that she was an archangel too. Interestingly to me, um, Al Dion Al Malak, the male being that appeared to me, looked like Robin Williams. Again, sort of perhaps going along with what I said before, that often these beings will take on forms of beings that we have already had contact with. Had a very broad smile on his face. 
And in fact, even during the dream, I think I thought that, gee, this person looks like Robin Williams. Um, there was, I think, some missing time between when I woke up and when I went back to sleep. Um, I don't know exactly how much missing time there was, but I don't think that I was around the entire time. I may not have even been around physically, although I don't know that. Looking back on my experience with Brennan, going back, oh, I guess maybe a year ago now, um, I think a very similar thing happened. I, I woke up, and then I, um, I heard somebody, uh, I heard somebody in the room uh, bump the bed and then say something like, like, oh, noticing I was there. Um, and then a period passed before I got up, and I think that was also some missing time. Um, in other words, I don't think that I was around uh, during that entire time. I think I was perhaps taken someplace else. I think that is one of the ways in which these beings often work with us. They approach us in our dreams and our visions in various kinds of fugue states. Now the interesting thing about this is when I woke up, I thought to myself, well, what is this person's or this being's name? And the name Eldion or Aldion occurred to me, and I did not know what um, Aldion meant in Arabic, so I looked it up and found out that it meant the judge, which I found kind of interesting. So the judge, the angel, appeared to me um, for some reason. Um, I think that we are entering into a period of world crisis and judgment. And um, the world is certainly in need of judgment, as are each of us in need of judgment all the time. We are all in need of being being judged and watched and uh, monitored and, and spiritually uh, nurtured as we, as we live in this very, very challenging time. So um, that's about it for uh, this broadcast. I hope it won't be that long before I do this again, but I felt in light of what happened last night that I really needed to uh, make this recording. Uh, if any of you uh, find any interest in it, uh, please feel free uh, to comment. I do check my, my uh, comments at least uh, once or twice a week. Uh, if anybody has left any messages for me, I will see them eventually. Uh, sometimes I get busy at various points, but I'm on vacation over the summer. I'm off for the summer as a professor, so I have a lot more time than I ordinarily would. Until next time, this is Dr. Mark A. Foster. Have a good one.